Okay, cheers. Hey. Welcome, Elkies. Good to have you with us. Absolutely. This is episode number 69, I believe. Thanks for tuning in. Filthy. And boy, is it a filthy one. Well, I don't know, but we get a little drunk. Uh, our guests today are Fleur Seville, Lane Jaffe, and a good friend of the show, JC Aviles, a regular. Basically, you the could third host. Say. Third host. You could argue. Uh, fun sit down. There's some audio with JC because he's recording into a phone because we don't have five microphones. So apologize for that. You hear that, Santa? Perhaps a, a good amount of crosstalk going on in this one, too. But we get into a lot of fun. We talk about uh, movies, ideas. Um, well, we talk about a lot. I, it goes like a lot of places quickly, I think. Don't say we didn't warn you. Uh, but before you even get into all that, here's a warning. Warning. <laughs> Your coffee sucks. <laughs> what are you buying? Fucking Starbucks? Corporate Don't bullshit? Do that. Have some respect for yourself and have some respect for the world and your community by drinking Hexa coffee. That's right. Being sourced from all over the world, roasted right there in the city of Chicago. Right there. Right there in the heart of it. In Roscoe Village, uh, they have a cafe, bar, even a little restaurant. There's mm -hmm. really good food, sandwiches, pastries. Events, they do it all. Hexa Coffee in Chicago. And if you're not in Chicago, don't worry about that. You can order it online at hexacoffee.com. That's H-E-X-E -E coffee.com. And check out using the promo code ELK. You get 10% off of your total purchase. Woo! All right, cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers, friends. Right Dude, those are cool. Cheers. JC, cheers. JC, cheers. Salute. Salute. Oh, wow. 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 See how it feels? It hurt. Mm hmm. JC, Mine was unintentional. I know. It's hard to know who's like tuning into me, you know? Just Without the glasses, the... I can't see. You can tell him, I can, you tell can see his you. eyeballs. Ooh, you, you guys are mysteries. You guys are complete mysteries. Yeah, full on. To myself as well. To yes. everybody. International and everybody men and Hi, women are mystery. The, um, <laughs> no, I, I, I don't like you the cheersing. When it's a team <laughs> cheers, I don't think you got to get everybody. I'm yeah. sick of that. There should be a limit. If, if you're with eight people around a table... You don't gotta get everybody. Yeah, you, know you do, man. Don't even I say make, this. I, guess, you're you're getting sloppy. I have to I get try. everyone. I try really hard to. Like, I agree. Yeah. I resent it. And also, you're getting sloppy though, because sometimes you don't even make eye contact. And uh, yeah, a lot of people, it's that's stupid. unlucky. It's a dumb I, rule. I never do, and people get mad at me. A little bit of eye contact. Do you guys contact make? Eye, goes do you think cheersing is important to have the etiquette of the cheers? Well, how would you choose? If there's eight people, which six do you choose? No, you just you just go like that, right? Yeah, and then you're yeah, back. Agreed. Well, okay. What about we're all in there? Clink clang. <laughs> let's let's do it. Let's practice. Here, watch. Here's the best. Everybody way. try the everybody. So technique. this is the everybody. You don't even make. You, we're just going in. Cheers, everybody. Hey, Cheers. thanks for being here. See, I got them all. Fantastic. It's like Pokemon. <laughs> you like swiped it. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> but did you get eye contact with everybody at the same <laughs> time? Funny, just oh, all the no. glass shatters. Like, yeah. <laughs> That was much more efficient and satisfying. That's true. Everyone kind of has to be on the same page yeah, that we're doing time, a onesie. Time in. How do we right. feel about shots, though? Like if a bunch of people are like, oh, round of shots. Okay. And yeah. then all the shots come and I take my shot before we all take it together. Does that bother people? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I always do no. that. <laughs> yeah, no. It doesn't think... bother me, but I get it. I get why it would bother somebody. What about the shots? Well, no, no, no. Like, let's say we all get shots, separate shots, whatever. But we're all like, oh, yeah, let's take shots. I guess it depends if what it's is like the a whole... round. If you're out like celebrating a birthday and it's like the, we're about to do a round of drinks, it's kind of like. No, no, no. Casual, check just you're there. You do it well, together. Shots. What's really on trial is on cheers. On trial. Him. Why do we cheers? Do Why we do we need cheers? to cheer? Because the spirits, you got to keep them away. Well, then you're drinking your shot and you're ruining the sacredness of a cheers i'm just eating the spirits quicker so you do you not believe that cheers should be a thing no so you're anti-cheers anti-cheers i don't know how i feel about it i mean it is just like a sort of etiquette that doesn't actually mean anything why do we cheers was it wasn't it like so you'd splash the alcohol together so you know if you're being poisoned yeah that's exactly but we don't do that anymore is that a politician thing from like the roman era or some shit? 
Wait, when did that originate? Like, it's, it's like, like some King Arthur shit, yeah, right? It's like some old, old shit. Oh. So, yeah, have you never seen Princess Bride? I've never seen King Arthur. What about Princess Bride? Not the question. <laughs> no. <laughs> have you ever met King Arthur? What's have you ever met a man? Have you watched the show, Arthur? Arthur? What's Arthur? Princess Bride? Inconceivable. <laughs> Not <that> <laughs> <laughs> Anyone? Yeah, of course. You've never seen the movie Princess Bride? No. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Are you time? sure? No, <laughs> because like, it's a very popular movie. Have you movie. seen it? No. Who's in it? Oh. Whoa. Wow. Princess Bride. I have, oh, but is that not the guy from, very uh, many times. Robin Hood Men in Tights? Yes. Yep. That guy. Never seen it. Andre I know the Giant is in it. Andre the I know. Giant. Yeah. Oh, and the really, really good actor who's like, something, you, I'm looking for my father or something. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Manny yeah. Patinkin. Prepare to die. In a pop culture sense, I know I'm aware of Okay, it. but you never saw it. Never saw it. Wow. Well. Well, anyway. Why'd you bring it up? Because they... <laughs> oh, they cheers. <laughs> they cheers on it. Yes. And then, I've been drinking too much already. You ever see toddlers try to cheers, though? It's really cute. It's just a fun gesture. It makes people feel good. Bring no, some together. To bring some look together. at each I like other. Cheers. To take a moment to slow down, to acknowledge in some small way the people you're gathered with. It's nice. For a brief second, I was like, with alcohol? <laughs> alcohol? Food? That's, that's a... Well, no, it's only with alcohol that you really cheers. I mean, some people pray before they eat, and it's the same yeah, bonding moment, though. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but that's not what you want to say. Like but that. it provides a moment where you are touching base with one another. Yeah, sure. A grounding. And so, therefore, when you're at a party and someone gets a round of shots for all of us, the idea is to wait so that we all have this grounding moment. And we all sort of are here together. <laughs> so, it's about togetherness. So that we're grounded. Yeah. And so when you be a little piece of shit and you just take own. it, you've ostracized yourself from the, from the group family mentality, which is what we all went out We're to packed. sort of pursue in the first place. We're packed people. I guess my trauma's showing. <laughs> oh, your trauma's showing. I'll yeah. show you my trauma showing. Do you Sorry, feel like, guys. What, do you want to dig into that? Oh. So you think if you no. wait for everybody, <laughs> you're like a sheep? No. no. Is that your lone wolf? No, it's not even that. It's just that, like, uh, for me personally, I think that, like, I... I don't like waiting for life to keep living because usually when I'm taking shots with people, I'm like at the bar and like things are going on, a conversation just left or something. I don't know. I want to like get back to things quicker and I don't want to have to wait for you because you want a handshake with glasses. Like, <laughs> <laughs> handshake with glasses is how we're going to be that. pulling yeah. chairs. <laughs> like, like if we're at a function like together like this, then yeah, of course I'm going to like, you know, do the whole thing or whatever. But we're out and about, no, nah, it's every man for himself. Was that an armadillo? <laughs> I don't know. Something's in here, I think. I just heard something scurrying around. All right. I, I get that. Yeah, that's all. Hmm. It is sort of a formality that's maybe not necessary. And you resent it. You don't want it slowing you down. I don't resent it. I just get called out on it so much that I'm like aware of the pattern. Oh, well, maybe if you get called out on it. You, you... This is why I drink by myself. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the bar. Do you cheers yourself when you're by yourself? No. What? Why? Oh. Do you shake Dear hands diary, with Thank you Thank you so much for the shot of alcohol. I'm feeling so taken care of. <laughs> like, what would you mirror. do? You're just looking at yourself? Like, you look right out, clank. <laughs> <laughs> like, is it the sound you guys like? I don't know. Uh, the sound uh, is good, yeah. There's got to be something said for it if it's in every culture. It's not an American thing. It's a drinking thing. It is a drinking thing, yeah. Like in Argentina Communal when you do it, you, like uh, for, we say cheers, in Argentina it's chin chin. Which is like a European mm -hmm. chin chin. Mexico, salud, lo mismo en español. Salud. Panama. Panama. Yeah. 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 yeah, there must be so, something you know. to it. Boy, it's a human thing. <laughs> you, so, yeah, is the <laughs> only origin though this like... Yeah, I literally yeah. like, Googled it sure? like weeks ago. All right, what so about what, is the, what is the data? Or what's the history? What is the data? <laughs> Can you have this? <laughs> interpret the data for us. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's his glasses. <laughs> I know, it's like... Too, it's very it turns serious. into a banker. It's, it's, a, it's a sign of trust. If we cheers and your alcohol drops into the other one, then you know that I'm not going to poison you. But is that why the whole world cheers is yeah. is because 800 years ago there was a fear of poisoning yes. we still sing ring around the rosy because of like the plague like you know what i mean like yeah things in the last that long but in japan they don't sing ring around the rosy this is like a global <laughs> this is like pyramids this is everywhere it's like Wait, it's showing everywhere yeah but they're all over the planet that's true and they're they're like societies that shouldn't have known about each other built like the same pyramids facing the same direction where 
Well, you got got Stonehenge, you got uh, (laughs) uh, got your uh, Egyptian pyramids. Las Vegas, that that one? (laughs) No, like the the Egyptian pyramids, the uh, Mexican, the Aztec pyramids. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all face north. north. They face the same direction. Go back to the moon. Go back to Tepe. In Peru, what's in Peru? Peru? uh, Machu Picchu? Machu Picchu. Facing, Facing north. The Grand Canyon. Yeah, but how does everyone know about North? I mean, I would not. It would, if you just drop me in the world, yeah, but like you north. know because of the way the sun rises and sets, which is east and west. That's how you know. Well, so, so how you know north and south, where the moon is? No, but yeah. if you didn't know that, like there's previous information I would base off of to find north. But you just drop me in a world I've never been to. How did these people figure out <laughs> magnetic north? The sun. Stars. So what they about the sun and the stars they tells you have that's smartphones. north? They were a lot smarter. They just that's true. And they, and they, they, they like, it's like nature. Of, um, but once IQ, you know how to read basically. it, then yeah, you can you say, okay, oh, because you, you don't have TikTok annoying you every day, and you look at look up at the stars. Oh, I'm the just universe. impressed. Or okay. light pollution, because back in the day, people would look up and they would see nebulous. They would see galaxies. Like so wild. imagine seeing that every day. Like no wonder, no wonder religion spurred up in the in general from humans and like because we'd see these fucking starscapes every single day. Yes. I thought like we that. need to go outside. I know. To see what? Did we take yeah, <laughs> 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 this? We can obviously go to the pyramid and then we can cheers. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk about real topics. Who's the hottest person in the World Cup? Who's the hottest person in the World Cup? Who's the hottest person in the World Cup? Well, so JC. Who's the hottest person in the World Cup? 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 And I said, I don't get it. I don't think he's that handsome. And then he said sports. And I was like, They're all beautiful. I was watching the Iranian team today, and they're just all so hot. The Iranian team is super hot. So good. That's how we got on this. Best of me. I was here to do some homework. Maybe I'll get into sports. I was sitting here at it, and Paul's watching that, that, all of a sudden I take my headphones off, I'm like, oh, how's the game? And he's like, dude, the Iranian team's hot. It's so <laughs> funny, they're the same so exact hot. 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 by myself. Well, but here's my beautiful. thing, here's my thing, earlier in the day, Wait, we were watching, color. no, yesterday we were watching Cristiano Ronaldo, and Paul's like, eh, not that hot. And I was like, oh, that's interesting, because a lot of, like, women in the world, and people in <laughs> right. general, women, think that yeah. he's... Um, he's Top super hot, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but I then you said uh, Iranian dudes are hot, and I was like, okay, so his type's Middle Eastern. So I'm like, just trying to like zero <laughs> in. He's trying to, she's trying to pin down my type. Yeah, but it's not Middle Eastern necessarily, because like, no, but, playing a hot non No, but everybody dudes. finds certain and, things attractive. Like, yeah. Because sometimes I'll like, uh, like, I don't know, I'll have a girlfriend who's like, oh, that guy's super hot. I'm just like, really? Why, yeah. So who do you guys think <laughs> is the most- Every now and then I have a girlfriend. Who do you think is the most overrated <laughs> man? In terms of his looks, a guy everyone seems to think is handsome, and you look at me like, eh, I don't get it. For any help with this one, I, I do, you oh, know, I, into my well Tom house. Brady. No, Tom. I don't think he's handsome. I mean, I think he's fine. He's but fine. if he wasn't like an NFL player, you wouldn't look twice at him walking down the street. Oh, You'd be yeah, like, oh, he's, yeah, Tom he's Brady looks like he works at the local program. You? He's six four, two twenty, and oh, chiseled. Okay. Like he's got a good body, but his face, a picture of his face. He's single now. I agree with him. Yeah, no one. Look, I'll I'd fuck him. I'm not saying I would. <laughs> I'd definitely check him out. I'd check out Tom. So who's but the I most agree. overrated? I agree. We've, we've had this. That's funny that you drew on that because we have had this talk before and I feel like Tom Brady came up. But I don't know. I, Justin Timberlake is one I've never really found to be like yeah, particularly handsome. But it was like still such a heartthrob. Like, I don't know. I guess not a heartthrob. Well, no, a it was a sex symbol. Totally. Yeah, yeah, he was definitely. Oh, yeah. you know that country singer guy? Luke Bryan. I don't, I don't know. He's on like some game show. I don't fucking know. Mm. Oh, Blake Shelton. Blake Shelton. Nope. I don't think no, he's like. No, but nobody's pretending he's hot. He was like sexiest man. I know it's a, I know oh, it's a PR thing, but he was sexiest, sexiest man, man alive. alive. He's what definitely hotter ago? now than oh, he was with the mullet. I'll give him that. He looks good with him and Gwen. They're like one of my favorite little couples. <laughs> <laughs> but oh. Stefani and yeah, they got their love story was so sweet. Watching them like fall in love it was cute. Oh, interesting. I like them. But. They were on The Voice and like Yeah, I mean, I guess he's like, oh, that's cute. He's, he's like, handsome because he's like rugged, you know, and kind of, and funny. But yeah, yeah he's not that sexy. And he he's not like Hugh like, Jackman. He Hugh Jackman's hot. He just has a self-deprecating oh, right. sense of humor. So, he's so talented. Awesome. And he's not straight. Who's straight he's anymore? Straight? What does straight yes, he is. mean anymore? Is he? He's had a wife for like Hugh Jackman's been married years. for a hot minute. Oh, thank God. Yeah, no, he, he has, <laughs> he's been with the same lady for a long time. I mean, like, obviously I'll accept him either way. I'm just saying like, in a... Another world. The Rock. Funny, I, the Rock is like weird looking. Oh, you don't it's think like the Rock is hot? He's strong, but I mean, he doesn't look like those Iranian <laughs> soccer like, players. Like, is that? His face isn't sculpted. 
it's a little bit too bulky. I'm not feeling the rock. Yeah, no. he's like. I'm not feeling the rock. Yeah. The rock. It's a good. That's fair. Who's hotter, the rock one. or Kevin Hart? The rock. Or Kevin Hart. They're just always like in things yeah, together. He's yeah, handsome, yeah, yeah, great yeah. body. He's little, <laughs> but he's maybe little. he's taller than. Flair? I don't know. Everyone's still I was looking around like, who does this like, I was gonna, <laughs> Who said this to me the other day? Who could I pair this with? So like, I'm not just pointing at Flair for being short. <laughs> my friend the other day, he goes like, you're hilariously not tall. I was like. <laughs> well put. We get on all the rides. It's not a problem, dude. Oh, do you get on the rides? You get on all the rides. I don't like roller coasters. No, she doesn't like roller coasters. <laughs> mm, so you, you don't can, know. Check <laughs> ride one. So I don't put myself in that position. <laughs> do you like any of that kind of like thrill-seeking things, nope. bungee jumping. Yeah, I've bungee jumped. She doesn't let us drive in the right lane on Sunset, so. Yeah, because that's where all the gutters are. And the whole time, have you not been noticed? And there's two well, lanes. Well, you'll, you'll go up with, over, what there's do you mean the There's two lanes. Yeah. And in this country, on the right-hand side of the lane, that's where all the gutters are. So I'm always in the passenger seat, and it's like, the whole time. But now that I've said it, you'll notice it. Wow. Yeah. So no, yeah, don't uh, but I mean, why are you driving in the gutter lane? Aren't I'm you just driving on the lane that's moving, you know. I'm just. Right. And it's also the lane where all the buses start and stop. So you oh, get no, but the, the left leave. lane is where people move. need to turn left at some point, and so yeah, they'll someone like, stop waiting to there. turn left. We've got a friend who doesn't turn right. Last night we did dinner. Oh my god. <gasps> Doesn't turn she left. Can't, doesn't turn left. Can't turn left. Oh, he's right. not oh an avatar. Yeah. He's Zoolander of the car. He's the Zoolander of the car. I had a friend like that once take me to the airport, and she like refused to turn. Like she wouldn't turn left in a yellow, which yeah. is mandatory in Los yeah. Angeles. And she's oh. like, "No, I have to do it in the yellow." And it's like, "Bitch, we're gonna lose our flight to Panama." Like, <laughs> did you? No, no. We screamed at her. <laughs> she won. <laughs> she moved. <laughs> Who? Okay. Tell me later who that was. I forget. Katie. Um, it was Jesse's friend, Katie. Oh, Katie. No names, though. No names. Katie. She was on some dumb reality show back in the day. Katie. A dumb reality show, girl. <laughs> <laughs> it does drive me crazy. Pet peeve. This podcast going to jump all over. This is fun. But it's like, <laughs> I like to think of it as like tabs open. Yeah. You know? yeah and then it's open. like, we've got them all open and then we'll come back to yeah. them all in detail. This is going to be a hard I, one I hope you're right. to listen to, I think, like. Three is hard enough. Four or five, like my dad's gonna complain. I already hear my dad being like, "Good episode, a lot of crosstalk, a lot uh, of yeah. crosstalk." Well, but anyway, a pet peeve driving me crazy. If the light is green and you want to turn, you can utch out, so can, that once can, it turns yellow, out, that's your out, time. Absolutely. Says, People utch. sometimes that's sit cute. behind that line right, so they're until they can, them. so it'll turn yellow, then red, and they're just stuck. Drive me crazy. Pet peeve. What, okay, I'm sorry. When they're out in the lane. No, no. Some people don't even ouch out. So oh. it's like I want to turn. I want to turn <laughs> left. You got to get two cars through. Is like, the best it's funny one. Mandatory uching. Uching. Okay, I would like so to the make other day, I, okay, uch. so I was driving down Colorado and I get in the left lane to turn onto Adams and it's it's an, a really hard left to make and you almost always have to run the yeah, like through. go into Absolutely. the red like it just is always the way. But one time I forgot. I was like kind of looking at my phone and I didn't, I wasn't across the line when the light changed. So I just stayed there and I didn't know somebody was behind mm. me. And he honked at me for like the whole time the light changed and it like was like yelling at me down the street. I'm like, I'm sorry. I I'm on his side. Uched, I should have <laughs> <uched. laughs> There was itching that should have been done. I should have itched, but it was just a long day and I was. Speaking in my phone whenever I, I see, it. whenever I, I see that it. happen, or whenever I used to like drive in LA and I saw that happen, I'd be like, "Oh, you're a freshman. Like you're new here." Because yeah, whenever I first I, got here, I would do the same thing. I'd be like, "Oh yeah, you have to like you know, you gotta stop there." And then I'd see people do it. I'm like, "Oh, they're brave." But then I start seeing it happen all the time. I'm like, "Oh yeah, this is like, that's protocol. <laughs> like yeah. that's yeah. the only way you're gonna make that left turn." Yeah, you do have to be aggressive about it. Mm -hmm. Question: Maybe. Personalized plates. Ah, uh, <laughs> I'm not here. I don't love them. I don't love them. I must say. Every time I'm sort of like, uh, it's a never bit cool. Much. It's Correct. never points towards <laughs> you. Like it's never. I don't look at you better because you got the personalized Flower plate. Twenty seven. Yeah. Oh. If anything, it's a few notches down. Because you wasted your time. You don't value your time. You spend what is that a half a day to get some stupid no. thing on your life? You just got to pay for it. Yeah, but it's quick and easy. Do there. you have to go to the DMV? No, no, you can do it online. All right, last judgment, but still, it, it's. I'm gonna get you one that says help. "Uch." 
Fleur, yeah. if you were to have one uh, personalized Bushy. plate, what would what would it say? No, <laughs> it would be <laughs> left lane I wouldn't only. get one. I just not have a car. Mm. I, and Rory has I a inst- no, like, basically the only reason she, way she keeps in touch with not the only way she keeps in touch with people, but we all send her personalized plate photos, and then it's just like the worst and the worst and the worst and the worst, and she just reposts them. They I'll get you in on it, guys. It's a real joy. Yeah, it's like oh, a yeah. cheer. It's like saying cheers. It keeps it's, you together. Anything oh, that brings, brings you together. It, back oh, to the yeah. it does keep us That's together. Why Lane's here. I, right. Yeah, well done, Lane. Lane, other than Fleur playing pickleball, what are your big pet peeves? Oh. Tennis. No. So how long? How long do we have? Fucking. St- <laughs> excuse the language. Uh, you actually kind of. Go. go ahead. Kind of a what? Well. You're an interesting guy. Interesting. Because you're like sort of you you you're a breathwork teacher. Right, right. A relatively zenish, healthy, conscious man, but a little ornery at the same time, you know? Like things <laughs> things will bug you. Ornery. I, you know, ornery. Right, you're right. complex. Yeah. I think we all are. Paul. That's fair. You know, I think it's the yin and the yang, and I think my roommate <laughs> said it best when he said you know, you're 52% New Jersey and 48% Zen Guru. So it's like that battle. Yeah. That's, that's always happening. So I like I, it. you have the emotions, you got to just channel them, which, you know, sometimes I win and sometimes I lose. But, you know, I'm not trying to fool anyone. Yeah, it's so more it's genuine. Like, I yeah, like it. you know. No, I appreciate that about you. Like, like, it's yeah. more approachable. I, yeah. I, pra- I practice. I'm trying hard because I'm fucking, I, otherwise I'd be like, you know, climbing walls or, or yeah. doing crazy things. So I, I, I practice those things. Doesn't mean I'm Zen. I just, practice meditation yes that kind of stuff yeah i think anyone whose identity is like full zen believe it whatever fucking right. yogi like, bullshit totally. positivity you're lying no, you're lying you're fucking lying, lying. No. yeah so i do appreciate that it could be you. well more more well practiced right those people they've but they're not. Yeah. If you're yeah, that yeah, zen, yeah, right? Why they? Why do you? Why you got to make an Instagram post about how zen you are? <laughs> is that zen? I don't know. It's woke. It's woke. Um, but are you even woke? woke? Woken up. So anyway, so, yeah. So <laughs> pet, a little pet peeves. Pet peeves. Pet peeves. Pet peeves. Okay, guys. I like so that topic. <laughs> pet peeves is woke. Is is living in this woke world where you know you're not allowed to say anything or. People are getting offended, or okay. whatever the it may be, and it's touchiness you know, of the society. Let's let's be okay with everyone, and if you love them how they are, then just let them say what they want to say. If they consistently say it, okay, you can. So tolerance for man. not just different people's sort of lifestyles, but Thank different you. ideas. Thank you as well. Yes, absolutely. Full tolerance. Absolutely. I agree. I, I generally yeah. start, try to lean that way. I think uh, everyone. We were talking about this today. Like, even when you run into a friend or family member who's like. They seem sort of lost in their ideals. You're like, oh, you've been watching like Fox News a lot. But whatever they're saying, they mean well. They, they, to them, it's even the right thing. It's like, uh, and yeah, it's kind of, it is unfair that some people would just shut down an idea and not accept that. Cancel them. No, for sure. Yeah, and you, yeah, you can't fault a human being for like their own like human experience. Sure. And like, maybe you're wrong. I mean, to them, you're just as crazy, you know? Oh, like, a thousand percent. For I, thinking the other way. No, obviously you're right. <laughs> no, you're right, but I mean, in their wrong perspective, you're great. Exactly. I think the only time we should ever draw a line as human beings, at least right now in the world and the climate, is whenever like the emotion is too strong in like a, it's like hateful. If it's too hateful Absolutely. and too extreme, and like you don't want to talk, and everything is a defensive fucking thing, then like that that that's that's not good. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's, you should disagree with an idea. If I had a friend who was like, oh, like. Short people. I don't like short people. Short people people are just ruining everything and they smell like cabbage. And I would be like. I don't, there you go. I would, uh, I I wouldn't say, well, I'm never talking to you again. You're a piece of shit. But I would say, come on, that's not correct. That's a, a gross exaggeration. Most of them smell like cabbage. Yes, but some don't, you know. For sure. No, Yeah. Uh, that, that was a joke. I don't think that probably very lay, few smell lay. like cabbage. Yeah, it didn't <laughs> and the crowd goes wild. Yeah. Somebody else talk. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. Doing great. We're reeling it in. <laughs> no, but it's, uh, Nothing's black and white here. Be, you know. And so that frustrates you. That thing, the nuance. The fanatical wokeism, where where it's like self entitlement. It's like these people are going to the Guggenheim and like throwing mustard on these paintings or whatever it may be, for cult, for climate change. Like. You know, this narcissistic society where everyone is like a beautiful, unique snowflake, and mm-hmm. it bothers me. 
I think but there is like a, there is like a glass good. on the on the Andy Warhols that they've no they they put stuff on. No, they even like the Mona Lisa, they didn't get they didn't, they didn't get, get it. They didn't get the actual Mona Lisa. They didn't get it. It's just, glass on all of it's just to get the press Whoa. coverage. Yeah. Whoa, yeah. See, you don't even know if you're reading what you're reading is truth. I, that's a pet well, peeve. The things I'm reading, I thought it. that Graham post was truth. No, they're doing it on all the paintings, but there's like a protection on all of them. But hmm. that's yeah, not yeah. The, what you were saying. Well, but it's funny. The other side of it is the wokeness. There's like a misjudgment almost there too, going the other way where it's so like broadly labeled, oh, like this is just some woke woke cancel culture. And that becomes an easy way to dismiss sometimes like the right thing as well. You know, like there's so much focus on like not being a fan of wokeness mm. that it's almost just as the other side, like yeah. the right. other side and just Absolutely. as like tribal and not really taking things case by case to assess like oh like the full house girl got kicked off a of hallmark like that's just woke culture <laughs> it's like well maybe that time it wasn't or maybe it was like but it sort of it also became this like over generalized concept yeah. Yeah. Uh, over generalized problem but it also at the same time something should be getting called out on a mass scale you know your actions do have consequences but if you did something 10 years ago 15 years ago and you've changed your ways you should be allowed to be uh forgiven like forgiveness is a huge people make mistakes but uh, yeah m like mistakes are different than patterns of mistakes right, right, as well right. you know what's the biggest mistake you've ever made who are you talking to hmm. oh, i can't see yeah i can't who no, was yeah, that? Who it felt at? like it was to me but i don't yeah. know it felt like it was to me biggest mistake that you want to admit huh yeah those are kind of two different questions can you grab me a heineken lane uh, thanks doc anyone need anything well, biggest okay. mistake that I ever made that I want to admit. Do you have an answer, Fleur? <sighs> well, that I, that I can talk, okay. <laughs> yeah, everyone's got <laughs> one in their head they can't say. to talk about. The one I, the one that, I don't know why this came up right now, but I, it's probably because I'm going home next week, but do you know what a dairy is? It's like a um, corner store. Mm -hmm. Is that what you call them? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Candy. It's not a 7-Eleven, but store. it's a convenience store. Okay. So I got a job. I don't know why this came up, but just Thanks, mistakes, sir. and this is what popped up. And I was working at the dairy, as we call them, in New Zealand. Oh, thank you. And the guy oh, was, he was like, I was, I was packing lollies, or what do you call them? Thank you. Candy. Suckers. Mm -hmm. called suckers, which is a weird term. Ca candy? Like different things. You know when oh. you used to get like a little... Uh, <laughs> fuck. Bag of candy. Bag of candy. Someone had to pack it. This guy. Okay. And then he goes to me, you can eat as much as you want. And I was like, yes, best job ever. And then my little brain, who's very pra which is very practical, was like, well, if I just put the can, I'm gonna get sick if I ate all this candy. So if I just put the candy in my pocket that I'm gonna eat, then I'm not stealing because it's in my pocket as opposed to my mouth. Same thing. Right? Not in her little brain. Fired. I got fired. She was stealing candy, called my mum. I'm, how old am I? I'm 38 years old. I still can't walk into that dairy because it's like, oh. oh. So I'm going to go in there and when go we go home and I'm going to be like, hey, and they though. still shame me and I'm 38 years old. So like security follows you around? When no, you but they're like, out. they give me the look. They're like, <laughs> like oh, we know. But I, and in my brain, I was like justifying, like, I was like, wait, you told me. Wait. I was like, you told me I could eat the candy and I just didn't because I put it in my pocket. Right. And then if you I need to back on this. Exactly. But I put it in my pocket because I'm really practical. Like, I'm like, of course I'm going to eat it. I don't want a tummy ache. I got to spread this exactly. out. I was like, put it in my pocket for later. Well, put it in my it's pocket. like an no, all-you-can-eat buffet, but like, you can't, you can't take, take There's no take-home. Take oh, wait, I got a piggyback on this. When I was in <laughs> third grade, young little eight-year-old me was a Girl Scout in the brownies, and I had to sell Girl Scout cookies, and I collected all this cash, all these checks, <gasps> and then I lost them all. I lost the oh. whole bag of all the cash and the checks, and then we moved and I just like never followed up with anybody about their cookies. 
Okay. <laughs> she still feels bad about it. I'm so their sorry checks, because though. nobody likes anything more than people like getting Girl Scout cookies. You know. That's big. So, so what? You just game. took the money and no, but the she lost, lost the money. Yeah. I lost, I lost the, the money, money and didn't deliver the cookies. And did not deliver the cookies. Wow. I didn't turn in the money or the checks. I lost them. Well, but the only people who lost was anyone who gave you cash. Correct. If someone gave you a, ca- a check, it just never I went through. I asked my no dad problem. about it the other day, and he's like, "I don't remember that." So I, like, I was too young to do my account. You know? I yeah, guess. I get it. I lost it. I did the piggyback on that. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what? Oh, do you have Toblerones? Yes. Yeah. I, I just had triangle one chocolate. Other. Yeah, the triangle <laughs> chocolate. So we'd, we'd get those at school <laughs> to sell to go to like visit our pen pal in France, for example. But it was, it was Paris. And I ate all them all. <laughs> oh my god! Instead of selling them all, so you weren't reasonable that time. I wasn't. I ate them all, and I was like, "Nah, <laughs> mum will pay for it." And she was just like, "No, you ate all of them, and you got no money. You're never going to Paris." <laughs> so I so never... they gave you a bunch of candy to go sell to raise money to take a trip to Paris to meet my pen pal. To meet your pen pal, and Aww. I never went. But that is the same time I would have been in Paris when I, and I'm not making this about this, but when I got my first acting gig so mm. it was like this divine timing because of my greedy gut I didn't mm. put it in my pocket I put it in my mouth didn't I so you didn't go to Paris yeah. because Who you put it, it in your mouth yeah. and so then <laughs> you stayed in New Zealand and you got your first acting gig yeah what was cool. that gig being Eve being Eve Which, that's your first acting gig yeah the star of a TV show yeah because I because I ate the chocolate mm. so right because you put it in your mouth you, the, <laughs> what was the process of that getting that for people listening, Fleur was the star of a show called Eve. Be the Eve. show's called Eve being Be, Eve. Being and she beat Eve. She was Eve. <laughs> and how she many be- seasons did it run? I like that. Two. Which two was- seasons in New Zealand. What yep. years did it air? 2000, 2001, 2002. Okay. <laughs> and so what was the audition process like? Like, how did you even hear about it? I uh, got it in the paper back in the day. And someone oh. said, oh, you should try for this. And so I did. And um, there was 1,500 girls and we all lined up. And I just it just kept getting called back like seven auditions and then and then I got cast as the best friend which I was really stoked about because she had really cool clothes and she was like the hot best friend and I was like yeah and then they called me back the next day and were like actually you're the you're the lead but you have to chop off all your glasses and be ugly and you're the nerdy glasses, lead chop, chop off your glasses chop off your hair and wear glasses and I was so upset but then that's when I learned what character acting was and it wasn't about being beautiful. Hmm. This is for your first TV show. This is our first gig <laughs> and ever. He's back. Was it the TV? Was the being Eve? So yeah, you had wanted to act before that. I'd had, done like theater and theater, school theater, or anything so, beyond that. Yeah, like community theater. There we go. Is that the cover? <laughs> <laughs> being See, Eve. ugly. Yeah, that's the floor. Oh my gosh. Oh, I haven't seen that one. Yeah. yeah, and you can look up Being Eve on YouTube if anyone wants to watch. And, and it's kind of like Malcolm in the Middle. You yeah. talk to the camera. Had mm-hmm. Malcolm come out yet? It had, right? No. So this was like, was and I'm so glad that I was on this pre social media. Did you sue Frankie Muniz? They don't sue in New Zealand. We don't it's sue very, in New Zealand. Uh, we also oh. don't make any money. You gotta sue. You gotta <laughs> sue. Baby, come on. Um, <laughs> Maybe I'll sue now. You gotta sue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but it was it was like it was like we're all still friends. We're all still in contact. Oh, cool. Who are you? These glasses just. Sorry, the glasses got so weird. So yeah. so yeah. I've met my so agent. I'm in Paul. rare form. I'm in Paul rare Prisky. form tonight. Um, okay, so I mean, what were the challenges of getting that role? Did you have like a lot of Nothing. sort of I imposter no, syndrome, or you were like no, whatever? I Wait, how, no, how old were you for that? Fifteen. Oh shit! Sure. I just had no expectations because I'd never done it before, and I was like, oh, cool, I get to go in and. Yeah, they all I had to say was hi. My name's Fleur, and they were like, "What's your star sign?" I was like, "Cancer." Is that why you you still 100% ask? believe in star signs? <laughs> Probably because it made well, me a star. Whoa! Hi. Over now, that. Um. So, I mean, it's just cr- well. What is what is that like in New Zealand? Because maybe I'm associating it like you're the star of an American TV show. I assume it's different. Is it more low key being a star in New Zealand, or is it like just as were you like Frankie Muniz style walking around? People want to take pictures with you and mm. shit. I mean, yeah, but it's it's New Zealand, so everyone's like, oh, sorry, hi. Like everyone's very polite. <laughs> you're almost like a local celebrity. Yeah, totally local. Did you get to like the name of my new show. other so totally, <laughs> totally local? local. I like it. Did you start like hanging out with other like 
child stars and shit? Like, so you were like full blown. Yeah. Celebrity. I mean, do we? No, I was. It was very lo- lonely. <laughs> no, in the best sense of the word, because it was summer holidays, and I wasn't allowed to get a tan because of continuity. So everyone was out having like. I don't know why that's so funny. <laughs> because I was on the beach and shocked, it, cause cause I could not get really brown tan. Really get a tan. And these are the things you remember when you're 15, and everyone's out there having their summer holidays, and you're in the beach like covered in a blanket. You're like, you can only go out at night. Not, yeah, basically you're you a vampire beach, for mate. three months. Yeah. But you had like the most amazing job and you worked super hard for like 15 hours a day for three months and you have to go back to school and be a kid again, but you'd like had access to an adult world. Yeah. So that was, that was interesting. How what? was, how, how did that like uh, transfer into like school world? Did people start treating Honestly, you Honestly, I started wearing my own uniform and I was like, you can't touch me. Mm, so you, you, cause you were like, that was I'm the on baddest, TV. Yeah. Cause I was like, I'm on TV, but that was the baddest <laughs> thing I did. Like, wow. I mean, it's not very bad. I was like, I'm wearing my own pants to school. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I've beaten the system. Yeah. But really, I just wore blue pants that but were it, tighter than the normal boring blue pants. But do you think it did get to your head a little bit? It went to your head like, I'm on TV and I'm 15 years old. Like, suck it. No, I wasn't like, suck it. I was just like, I, just, I didn't want to be at school. I didn't enjoy school. I was. I just wanted yeah. to be back on set with the real with the real world. You want to be an adult early. I wanted to be an adult early. Mm. You want to go back yeah, to the adult that world. Don't we all want to be yeah. an adult early? Now I want to go back to being a kid. So you want to be. No, it's funny how that goes, huh? Yeah, yeah. I was like, I'm in the world. This is how the real world works. Like, get me back there. And then I was like, Ugh, I have to do two more years of school. Lame. Did you graduate high school? No, I left three weeks before I had to graduate for another TV show. Yes. Hell yeah! Is it the one that I saw the bloopers for? Is it, it's like a bunch of like mid teens that kind of felt like Power Rangers? Yeah, totally. <laughs> it's the one, the tribe. You were in the like Power Rangers style show? No, I'm the only person in New Zealand to have never done Power Rangers because I auditioned and they said, "Can you do martial arts?" And I said, "Yes," and I kicked over the camera in the audition. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and the tripod went flying and they were like, you can leave now. Oh my God. Yeah. But there was a New Zealand Power Rangers. Oh yeah. It's still going to this oh, day. Oh, and they do it in every country. Power Rangers they, probably. They, now they, they take most of the Japanese Power Rangers. They shoot some of it there and they shoot most of it in New Zealand cool. because it's just cheaper to shoot in New Zealand. Mm. Okay. So the American Power Rangers show. Is filmed in New Zealand. It is now, yeah. Ah. But I feel like this is the last series they're ever doing, like literally as we speak. Mm. Mm. Of the Power Rangers. Of the Power Rangers. Why did that one Power Ranger just die recently? I saw that. What was, was the old. cause of death? He I wasn't. He was like 50, it was su- 45. It was suicide. Oh, he committed oh. suicide? Right down the room. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Suicide awareness. Bummer, Jay. Bummer. It's just something just that actually happened to the start. <laughs> that was um, the only reason I knew it was like such a big thing is because our our, our best friend Joey, like he like posted about it. And po- Joey kept posting about it. Like I knew it was like a like we all like you know felt. I personally, I was like, oh yeah, the Green Ranger. When I was a child, I loved the Green Ranger. But like yeah, Joey right. kept posting about it, and I was like, Come why is he keeping <laughs> to post this thing? And then I looked it up, and like yeah, like yeah, unfortunately mm-hmm. he. He killed himself. He took his own life, yeah. yeah. Which is sad. That sucks. Because he seemed yeah. like a happy guy. But that, that's how it goes, I guess. But he was the Green Acting. Ranger. Yeah, he was the Green Ranger. The Green Ranger for like, uh, like yeah, in, in in the States, that was like... Then he turned White role. Ranger. Yeah, because he was like the villain first. And then he and he was so cool. Then he became the White Ranger and he was like the hero. Like, yeah. Because when Power Rangers first came out, there is no Green Ranger. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. the main dude is the Red Ranger. Yeah, yeah. The Green yeah. Ranger was like, yellow, it was like Alpha versus yeah. Alpha, you know? Like, but then, yeah, then like new Green Ranger shows up. He's like, I'm kind of the and he top had dog. Like a, and the Red Ranger's all jealous. Different, like he had like a different yeah, thing. And like a ponytail. <laughs> and a ponytail. Right, he had a ponytail. <laughs> yeah. When it was, when it was cool. I was like, when was that cool? <laughs> do you want to hear the jingle that I didn't write, but my friend did? For yes. the Power Rangers? Sure, sure oh, do. please. Yes. Power Rangers, they've got a range of power. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> it is. Oh, it is it's stuck in my head for like 15 years. They've got a range of power. <laughs> it should totally be the they thing. they got a range. You know, I heard they like purposely... Just get new actors every two years so that they never no, they have do. negotiating power. That's yeah, right. and exactly. they do it in New Zealand, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they never have negotiation. Our, our friend wow. Woody, Woody like true. our friend Woody, was like uh, like working at this restaurant, and the, one of the bartender girls was one of the Power Rangers, and that's how he like. Everybody's a Power Ranger, apart from me. That's amazing. <laughs> 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 the whole nation of 
Power Rangers. <laughs> Honestly, it, I can. We, you can have an inter- if you what Power Ranger do you want? I'll bring them to the next podcast. Can't really. So, so does that mean that like the OG one? Power Rangers they oh, they, they got all the like cake one. in the sense of like pink one. residuals? Is Kim Crossman. The they got nothing. Power Ranger. She was in Power. Oh, they got nothing. Pick the pink one. And then none of them get nothing. Nobody gets nothing, pretty sure. You get hired, you're like, we'll pay you scale. You're going to be Power Rangers. You're going to be famous. You're going to be on TV. You're going to love it. <laughs> but I would venture to say you get the, no piece of the show. But the exactly. OG ones got the like the best deal because the, at least they were in motion pictures. They get some form of they residuals, I would assume. Oh, because they also did the movies. They did the movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least that one movie with Ivan Ooze. Great movie. <sighs> Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Power Rangers. Interesting. They've got a range. So you did this show, your teenager. The show ends, you're 17. Yep. Did it get like canceled? Was this like a bummer, like a heavy hit? No, it was just New Zealand, like doing t- uh, 24 episodes was like a, <laughs> believe it or not, a big win in New Zealand. Yeah, and then, like I, and then I guess it just didn't get funded again. Mm. But we won like an international, we, uh, did we win? I can't remember. Or got nominated for an international Emmy. Nice. Which is crazy. What other kind of shows were... Was there like a show from Paris and a show from Indonesia? Like, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. What was New Zealand's Zealand. voice like mm-hmm. in the film world at that point in time? I mean, I think New Zealand's voice in the film world has always been well respected. Like, have you ever seen The Piano? No. I've seen Jane piano. Campion? No. She just won uh, the, what's the, oh my God, Power of the Dog last year. Mm. 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 Yeah. Same director. Um, I mean, I feel like Taika. Taika. Is like your guy, right? Yeah, exactly. Flight of the Concords. That was yeah. like that was my introduction the big New breakout for New Zealand, right? Yeah, absolutely. Was that a big show for New Zealand? And and was it like unusual? Because for HBO, that was like we've never seen a show like this. It's amazing. Was it that also in New Zealand, or was it like, dude, all the shows are like this in New Zealand? You know? Well, we have this thing, unfortunately, called tall poppy syndrome. Okay. Tall pop poppy syndrome, Tall poppy like a syndrome. flower, like yes. a mm-hmm. poppy that grows up. So if anyone gets up too high and growing in the field, then it's it's very normal to just chop them down. You keep all the poppies the same level. So Flight of the Concords was obviously brilliant at its time, but we're all like, yeah, whatever, it's, just, it's not that great. And then they went to New York and they became huge. And then we're all like, yeah, 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 they're ours. That's yeah. us. That's us. Yeah. So we, we do that as a culture and it sucks. Okay, so you guys resented Flight of the Concords at first. Not resented it, we just didn't like want to give them the kudos that they totally deserved at the time. But I think that was, I think things have changed now and people are much more supportive of people's art. And And like Taika, is he a poppy they want to chop down or are they trying to build him up? And now they're they're like, he's ours, he's ours. Because of the like Oscars and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's interesting. Is that more an entertainment business culture thing or is it like a culture culture thing i think it's a cultural culture thing oh interesting yeah it's also big in, in japan they use they use their analogy as using nails to like you keep the nail down on the board and just keep everything in mm. line oh. yeah. I feel like there's a lot of but americans are like yeah you can do it even if you can't which right. is i think why so many of my community culture is is so uh drawn to the american culture because we're like yeah we can do it and people tell us we can even if we can't we love that like Hope. Hope, yeah. The we American love dream. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But even in America, there's sort of, depends on the sort of culture or place you grow up at, but some places you'll see they'll like, like if everybody in the town like drinks beer all day and whatever and like, bleh, just like it's is like shitty about their health. But and then someone's decides like, I'm going to start working out and like eat vegetables. Like, oh, like. That guy's a pussy. Carrot boy over here. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll try to like bring him back to like, So back carrot, to your everybody. carrot boy is our tall poppy. Oh, yeah, I, well, I just made up Carrot Boy. It's not like carrot an actual thing, thing. but Carrot Boy, yeah. Carrot Boy over here, you know, watch boy. out. There is sort of a tendency is that, that you... Is that your Power Ranger name? Carrot Boy, yeah. <laughs> the Orange, Orange Ranger. Ranger? <laughs> he has terrific vision. <laughs> you carrot Boy. Right? Gives you good vision? It's true. Power Ranger. Um, <laughs> bring it back. But yeah, I don't know. There's kind of a natural instinct to like... Suppress. Push other people down because, I mean... It brings us to the topic of success. <laughs> <laughs> what is success? I, I'm i glad you asked that. Yeah, I want to hear what you have to say about it. Hmm. Christine. <laughs> She's oh, yeah, like, way to call me out with the... Well, you're so hmm. glad she has. Well, yeah, that hmm. Hmm. Yeah. had an was, answer behind you, it. You lobbed it up. Like, I'm glad you asked <laughs> for you know, somebody else. I get the reason I say that 
is because I don't know we're about to be releasing music and I'm trying to define like understand what it means to be content with that like mm. what what am like what do I want I've never done that before so what yeah. do you want I mean I think for me success is um just being vulnerable like mm. enough to not really it's not so much of like I'm thinking of gaining anything but I'm finding strength in myself to be able to release things that I previously couldn't even like articulate or be willing to share so like to me being willing to share is is like the win in this particular situation being being comfortable they, putting it out yeah well then that's beautiful because that's your Internal, yeah, whoa, possums. Was that you? Was that, that was like a noise. That, that, was, was, that, was, that was his success. I was like, Look, I was like, I'm so glad we don't have headphones so nobody heard that, but I guess it was very audible. But that's a very healthy approach to it. That it success is. is just being comfortable putting it out and feeling comfortable, sort of as yourself. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just and just I don't know that point of it's uncomfortable for me and I know that mm. that is because I'm pushing down my own boundaries and like that mm. feels successful to do something that I was unwilling to do previously and to, it's like it feels like I'm digging deep you know and I I don't know I just always used to be so private about that so that feels different I will say as somebody who like puts well not all the time but like is not uncomfortable with that. It's interesting hearing that perspective because I, I, I feel that every single time. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. But I think to give your brain solace, we were in a room a day or two ago where people who like weren't really familiar with you singing or like your music were then humming the things that you were saying and talking about it. So and that's it's surreal, you you honestly. you're in the best ever position to have I, i'm just like very happy for you to like feel that because it's Thank a you. very good feeling yeah and it's and like, yeah and yeah there, there's great things behind the scary things yeah 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 and it's gang, like gang. it is it's, it's, <laughs> it's, like the, it's like the public speaking like that's like the number one phobia in the world but i I mean, anytime I have to do it, you still feel like the total adrenaline rush, yeah. which oh, for sure. inherently ends up being kind of enjoyable. Like, it's at least memorable. You know, like, it's better to feel pain, and in this way, it's better to, like, feel the discomfort of putting a little bit too much of myself or more than I may be comfortable sharing out there, you know? Cause it's just it's kind of worth it. Like, True. At least I'm feeling something powerfully and deeply and not like walking around in auto mode like autopilot <laughs> or no mode, or no mode. Yeah. That's, that's my favorite thing about really good words though is that like i think this is why i like performing is because like if if i can say the words that i've felt and i look at somebody else and they may connect with that i feel less alone because i'm just naturally in a state of anxiety and alone <laughs> so, <laughs> so alone so, together yeah, but, but also like it, it just feels it feels it's a it's a weird nice feeling. Right, yeah. Yeah, 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 cheers, so, Jason. And you're like, yeah, you're not alone, Jason. Yeah. Cheers, you're not alone. Oh, cheers. Oh, wait, oh, wait. cheers. Don't, 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 don't <laughs> just a one swoop. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, how are you doing? Wait, does it why you cheers alone? Because you feel alone. That's Holy why you cheers alone. This is why he does it. We just figured it out. Because you go back to the trauma. <laughs> no, no. no, but you're not alone. So now <coughs> you're never going to stand in a kitchen having a shot. No, but, by no, 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 no. I know that. I know that. But I, but but I also. And cry. But I'm also weird because I like I, I like these things. I like those feelings and lo those emotions. Like I, I I like when I wake up in the morning. I like watching like a TikTok video of somebody like being sad or or doing something happy that makes <laughs> humans feel good. <laughs> No, but but it just like just to feel emotion. To feel alive. Like, yeah, yeah, to feel alive because like that's the part I do get that, that like, I is, suppose. is 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 nice. Uh, you, I was gonna say something, man. Say it. <laughs> I like that you stop. Please say it. <laughs> <laughs> nice way to. Nope. <laughs> right on. But are you gonna say it? No. Okay. I uh, I don't get ask that you. with the sadness thing, but I do get like 
uncomfortable Ooh. feelings you sort of get addicted to and like that's when you feel alive like i bungee jumped one time i was scared as mm-hmm. fuck i almost passed out just from fear oh, for sure not jump like driving there i was like i almost passed out i was so yeah. scared and i felt fucking alive you know like you never feel more alive than when you're like sort of pushing yourself in some sort of way feeling fear feeling sad it's true or like even sadness the pain. can be more even the pain we look back at yeah like, with nostalgia you know like i've backpacked i don't know I yeah. mean, trekking like, you know, what? 15 miles, like over a course of six hours or no, I don't even know how long, a couple of days, like just constant hiking. And like looking back it's at abusive, but it fear, feels good. looking back at pain, looking back at sadness, it feels better sometimes than looking back at joy or happiness or success. Like looking back at that. Because it's this stuff that carves you right into the Yeah, I guess so. Are, right? I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I feel that, like it's I, like usually the pivot moments, too, where you're like, okay, I've got to do something different. If I'm yeah. like in this space too much, how do I get out of like pure sadness, get back to the joy, right? You just like, right, it's always like a, you didn't stay there. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's kind of like you proved yourself like that it doesn't destroy you. Like with performing or putting music out or something, it's always scary. Mm-hmm. But by doing those scary things, you realize over and over, like, this actually didn't, it didn't hurt. It didn't, I'm not dead. I'm not. Oh, a thousand percent. It's yeah. like, it really it's wasn't like, that bad. There's like, something comforting about knowing yeah. that you've Or even like it. singing karaoke. Mm-hmm. What if I do bad? And people are like, he's bad at singing karaoke. But then you go up, you sing bad. Someone thinks, boy, he's bad at karaoke. And like, okay, like, I'm fine. You know, <laughs> like, that didn't hurt. That didn't hurt that bad at all. I'm not dead. My arm's not broken. Like, I'm not, I'm fine. And like repeating that process, you kind of learn more and more. Like, yeah, it desensitizes okay. you to it, you know. Yeah, I was scared to do the podcast tonight. Wait, I'm still scared. Feeling okay. Should I we was. start recording? Yeah, we should probably start <laughs> now that we're warmed up. Now that we're ready. No, but I was because like even talking about like tall poppy syndrome or success in New Zealand, I'm scared of the repercussions. It's so mm. ridiculous. You think New Zealand's gonna chop you down? From who though? Who the who are these repercussions so we have this and I honestly version of them. I get it though. Yeah. When I when we first started this podcast, I felt like I felt like the cancel police were gonna be coming for me at any minute. And yeah. I was it was only inevitable for oh, me coming. to like completely say something <laughs> to fuck up everything. Yes, you know? Exactly. But so what can you? No, go? I will say it's so funny. So far, I'm still standing. When we had the, we started having the conversation about like woke things. <laughs> like I had that feeling for a little bit too. I was like, oh fuck, I'm not gonna like think about what I say and like yeah. worry about what I say. But and then, then I felt less authentic in what I was saying yeah. in the conversation. I was like, I don't even like. The that. podcast has been a real exercise in like just saying shit, and then people call me be like, like my family and stuff to be like, <laughs> what the fuck were you saying? Like that was so dumb. Like that's not a well thought out thing. Like it's reckless just saying these not well thought out things on the air. But I was like, it kind of feels good to just say something. And then I don't mean that forever. I just I, meant it in that moment. I'm just thinking out loud. Like what's the big deal? You know, like you're freestyling. Why can't I just think out loud on something yeah, like yeah. wokeness or whatever? And maybe I'll change my mind in a day or in a week or in a month with more time to think about what I should have said. For sure. Uh, I have a good question for the, the round table question because this is like one of the first questions that like, uh, one of the first questions that like made me be like, oh, Fleur's cool that oh, you asked oh. me. Oh, can't wait first to hear question that. that made you think Fleur was cool. I mean, no, no, I knew she was cool, but like she asked me this question. I was like, ah, oh, fuck. Ugh, that's a good one. What sign are you? Yeah, it's like, what's your primal astrology? No, no, no. He's a llama. No, no, no. I'm not asking you first since you asked me it. Okay, go. I'm a if I gave you a million dollars, what's the story you would tell? Damn. When did I say that? You told me that uh, whenever we left to get beers. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> <We're at dinner. laughs> it was awkward. <laughs> Well, that was how you guys originally bonded. And so you met in Sayulita where JC lives. You guys were on vacation. You were Maybe on just vacation. you were there. You're both there. We were there You're for my vacation. birthday. Yeah, yeah. And then we went to a dinner. And then JC was there with his friends who yeah, were yeah. Alf. We were all Everyone on the same together, friend, yeah, yeah. first night friends. And they thought they were going to take a taxi home, but there was no taxis until. Yeah, but we sat down and JC and I were like, where's the beer? Yeah, because there was a and vegan there was restaurant. No alcohol at the vegan restaurant. <laughs> we didn't have anything. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I'm just gonna go get a beer. And he was like, I might get a mezcal. And so we just went and had shots and mess. And that's when I asked you that. 
No. Well, it was after. We went to go get, we went to the liquor store, we got beers, and then we're like, let's go take a shot, too. <laughs> we got a shot. Then we went back, and we're like, hey, guys. And we're like, yeah, we're fun now. We're good. And they're yeah. just like, and then we had a table. lentils. Lentils. But we're sitting at the table. Oh, um, was so I, think, I think one of the homies, like, mentioned to you that I was, like, uh, that I, like, made, like, uh, like d- did filmmaking and wanted to direct and stuff. And you're like, oh, you want to direct? If I give you, <laughs> you're like, immediately, you're like, if I give you a million dollars, what's the first story you would tell? Or, like, what's the main story you would tell? And I was what like, was the answer? I think I pitched you the idea that I had like uh, kind of workshop with some friends early in the year about um, <laughs> oh a group of friends <laughs> that go to Mexico and um, uh, and they realize because the, because of a friend's baby shower and they realize they oh, want to have yes. kids so then they like give each other a pact <laughs> that they have to get pregnant in a week somebody's got to leave a dad or a mom <laughs> and, like who's gonna it's like hangover but you get pregnant trying to get um, pregnant they, great yeah. pitch so good it's like hangover but they're trying to get pregnant. <laughs> That's yeah, hilarious, uh, but that's not the story I wanted to tell. But I, but, but it, it made me go home, and I remember that night I like thought about. It. I dwell on it so hard. I really like, thought about it. So cool. Well, no, no, <laughs> no I, I, I'm not gonna ask shit. everyone I make that. No, I, I thought about like cool what question. story would I tell, and I, I, I know what story I would tell. So like I just yeah, I know. Yeah, I, sing I, it. But but I feel like a what story I would tell. Yeah. Oh my god. Paul's part of that story. Uh, whenever I was in college, and uh, me and my friend were in a rap group and stuff, and. We got an angel investor, and we lived in a fucking mansion, and like shot a reality show, TV trail or like pilot, basically. Uh, that yet you were in uh, Wait, a little this, bit of this happened. This all actually happened, yeah. And uh, <laughs> anyway, but and then we and then and then we like went to Calif- got to California, and my friends became alcoholics, and people got into pills, all these things. But this what also I, happened. This all actually happened. But what I want to tell, I think, to me, the important story is the the story of failure because. Mm. I don't think I, I don't think that if I would have reached success at that age and with those experiences that I had had, if I had reached success at that point, I would be either a really, really terrible human being or I would be dead. I, I think that I needed that failure very badly, and I don't feel like the story of failure in a good sense is told often, let alone in a young sense. And I, yeah. I would really want to tell that story because it was very fun. It was very beautiful. A lot of things happened, but at the same time, like it didn't end the best way. But also, I'm alive today, hanging out with you guys. So to me, it did end the best way, and there are things to that. So, but it didn't end the way that you, you wanted it to from the start. And I feel like it's a life thing, right? Sure, yeah. it's like Entourage if they just like failed for 10 seasons then finally it popped off oh and right now we're in like season 8 I got to see him the, I got to see him the other we're day we're so close like, to that season 11 when pivot. finally he gets success <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it's a yeah. great story yes we have had that conversation actually on this show I think you talked that we brought mm-hmm. that up yeah, yeah so what's your story so Fleur what story are you telling for a million bucks so a wait million. is a million dollars the budget the budget you just get a million dollars. I mean, you dollars. just told me that. You just told me, you were like, if I give you a million dollars right now, what's the story? What story yeah, would you tell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's really like if I paid to produce whatever you, ha- whatever oh, yeah. story you have, what story are you telling? Oh, can I pass and come back? Like, Shoot. I know, but it's a real Where are you passing story. it to? I mean, you. that's such a Mr. deep Mr. question. Mr. Zane Quiet Guy, yeah. That's why I like the question. Yeah, I've never thought yeah, of the, the, the answer to glance, that. But when you told me that, I was like... <gasps> no, it's so deep. That's why I'm like, how long you got? I got the answer, but oh, it's a whole other episode. Sep- episode? Sep- Sep- episode. Sep- 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 Go, Lane. What would you do if someone gave you a million dollars? Or is there a movie that you'd want to see that's never been made? Well, uh, my brain just... Oh, sorry. Thank no, you. keep going. I'm just listening and processing mm. it. Well, I just go, well, I can't make it for a million dollars. Right, exactly. That's <laughs> like, what I, I go into practical land. You sure, know? that's like, why I, I was like... The, I put it in my pocket and I donate tough. the lollies. Because how do you make a movie <laughs> oh, that's for a I don't even think about the million. I just think about the story. Like, yeah. yeah. So yeah, basically, it's like someone will artist. fund... Yeah, exactly. I'm more practical. <laughs> it's always your comeback when you don't have anything to say. He just goes... Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's visceral. It's... Yeah. It's... Like what, would, what if I gave you a million dollars, Lane? What would you do with it? Mm, there you Tomorrow. go. If he had a million dollars. Uh, well, I'd be entirely selfish with it because at the moment I'm super selfish and I would use the million dollars to invest. But like, what, what I would want to do with it is try to find programs to work with mental health and work with homelessness and find help people find their purpose and is hanky panky and woke as it sounds i think we all suffer while other people suffer so we all feel the collective suffering so if we could just help people find purpose and i know a million dollars doesn't do it but it's a starting point 
Wow, what a nice way to dodge the question. What's the movie you would make? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm sitting here with four creatives who are all in the entertainment industry who think about this thing 24 7. Lane, you teach I'm... breathwork classes. You're fucking creative too. Stop. Yeah, creative. Exactly. But he I... thinks he's not creative. No, it's a, it's a different creativity. I think about, you know, letting people know that they are okay. So when I thought about success, you know, sitting here silently is not, a, I'm actively participating in listening and obviously selfishly thinking of like, what are my thoughts on what everyone's saying? So when Christine's talking about what success is, it's being content in the moment, also having hope for the future. So if you're content in the moment, it doesn't matter what you're doing, as long as you're content in the moment with also purpose moving forward. So it's like, it, it could be making a movie, it could be sitting at this table, it doesn't matter what the, it is. Um, so being a breathwork teacher, being creative, my creativity is telling everyone that we are okay and that there's not, not everybody has to make a movie. Like the people at the table, everyone's gonna make a movie. Why? Because one, Everybody here is really talented. And two, everyone here works really fucking hard. So if you mix the two, it's inevitable that you guys will all be successful. Not everyone has talent and works hard. They have one of the two. All four of you guys have, four of you, two, three, two guys, two girls, not four of you guys. Two guys, two girls. Got all have you this. Cancel, cancel, cancel. Not everyone gets that. Not everyone gets that. And you all have that. So no doubt you'll be successful. You are Hopefully you're content because you guys have built something beautiful. But, you know, you don't know where, how it's going to end. You could have had your failure. It wasn't a failure. So point being is that I want to tell everybody that we're okay. That you all have your path. And whether that's, you know, leaving at an early age or going on to be a billion dollar person, like, we're okay. So I don't know. I, you know, that's, that's, my yeah. answer is homelessness. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you, Lane. I like it. Because you don't have to put it in movie form. Like, right. yeah, I never thought about a movie. You do have to put it into movie form. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the main question, but sure. We'll circle. We'll circle. <laughs> <laughs> that's literally the question. So we'll, we'll, all right. In the we'll, <laughs> we'll circle back. The movie is, I'm going to Kenya this summer and I'm going to coach the Kenyan national team. And then in the Olympics in 2028, we're going to get a bronze medal. Actually, yeah. no, but true story. Be a that is great actually what movie. It's doing. Film it now. You're going to get the bronze. The bronze. Wait, you're always going to. Why not go for gold? That's not realistic. You've Got to be realistic with the expectations. Yeah, but go for gold. You get the bronze. Yeah, you know? take the bronze. He's Happily. like, I'm going to Kenya. He's like, you're going to get bronze. No one wants to be silver. Bronze is okay. Silver's the worst. Silver's the worst. Yeah. You feel like you didn't win, but bronze are okay. You medaled. You yeah. won your last game. You're good. It's true. So yeah, we'll take exactly. the bronze. And it's a good ending to a movie because, like, oh, they didn't that. get the gold, so it's kind of a failure story. Right, they think. But that's okay, and they did get the bronze. They got the bronze. You medaled. Right. You won your last silver, game. Yeah. You're on the bronze. And then the real enemy of the movie is the people who got the silver. silver. Yeah, they that's, never you get to see the enemy Bastards. get silver, and you're <laughs> like, oh, silver's actually sucks. Silver feels terrible. <laughs> and then gold goes to, like, the, just the team that was better. They're kind of weren't as, they weren't like a main character but then you also feel bad for them and they hit their peak and then it'll never be that high ever again that's the Mm. ultimate peak but then it comes back to failure right and being okay with that because you're still you at the end of the day except for the silver it doesn't define you but suck it'll never it's like going to space like once you go to space astronauts are so fucked up or you win the lottery or whatever it is those success stories that we have in our minds that once we reach that pinnacle then everything's okay the end result is never it's never enough oh we should unpack that Unpack it. Unpack it. Oh, no, I mean, like, after the podcast. Yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> you, uh, what, <laughs> movie. We'll get to your therapy ah. session. <laughs> Gave you... <laughs> Paul, Paul, your movie. Oh, and... I mean, I have a movie I've been writing for like 20 you're getting, years. By the way, you're getting $225 million for this movie. 225 Yeah, I don't think about the money. I can work. Yeah, no, I'm not thinking about fitting it into the budget. I was oh. thinking if, if I should go for with that <laughs> yeah. story. I'll tell that story. You're such a producer. Please. So I've been writing a movie for like... Since college or Fact. something. Fact. Fact. Yeah. I've helped. Truth. And here's the movie. New iterations. Oh, I'm so ready. So I read uh, when I was a kid, I liked all these like miscellaneous facts. That was like a thing I liked. So for Christmas, my parents would usually give me like a fact, I a book this. of just like random facts, you know, that you just. It's See, like, dad, keep this. This Now he's talking <laughs> this truth. This is good dad, stuff. And so yeah, one of the it. facts I read was Adolf Hitler was infatuated with Clark Gable. So much so that he put a price on Clark Gable's head. If you can bring me Clark Gable alive, you'll get something. Clark Gable's Superman. Clark Gable, not Superman. That's but Clark the actor. Kent. That's Clark Kent. <laughs> Clark Gable was like the actor. Clark was Kent great. was named Clark be- because wow. of Clark Gable, Who's actually. Clark Gable? Like the George Clooney of his okay. day in okay. the 1930s. He's the star of Gone with the Wind. Oh, great. Okay. Have you been to his house in... Uh, What's the play? Uh, anyway. No. Mount Olympus. Okay. No. Heaven. Anyway. Ah, oh, fuck. It'll come back. Anyway. So you can go hire his house. <laughs> she like pointed Gable's out. house. She pointed Fortress out. of Solitude? No. And, uh, no. 
What's the what shitty town that's below Santa Barbara? Culver City. Culver City. Oh. Below Belos. Santa Barbara on the left hand, on the beach side. Ventura. Uh, yes, Ventura. Chula. You can hire Clark Chula's Evans house in Ventura. Mm. So anyway, Carry on. as soon as I read that, I was Fun like, fact. <laughs> fun fact. As soon as I read that, I was like, oh, dude, that's a movie. Like, a couple of Nazis trying to kidnap Clark Gable in world during World War II. Like, whoa. So anyway, that was just like the birth of the idea. And then it's just kind of evolved and evolved over time. But what it is now is like where, what I learned. I did a lot of research on Clark Gable, on like where, like what was actually happening in the world at the time. So in Hollywood, before World War II, and, and actually really all of America, like Hitler was elected in 1933. <laughs> was he elected? I'm just thinking about your passport. Elected chancellor yeah, yeah. of Germany, 1933. <laughs> thinking about my what? <laughs> <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing. And so, he didn't like invade Poland till 1939. So there's six years of like, boy, this crazy guy in Germany, like, are we worried about him? Ah, he's harmless, he's just crazy. Like there was a lot of that talk. Should we be worried about all the Germans around? Anyway, there's a lot of parallels to like, it's a hard movie to tell it quickly, but so. This is a movie you're writing. It's, it's a movie picture. I'm writing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds Elevator like a lot picture. like real life right now, just saying. So, well, it's, it's, so here's it's the thing. interesting time to make There's it. a lot of parallels. The, the basic pitch of the movie is like, what I learned in all this research, Clark Gable's wife during the 1930s was this woman, Carol Lombard. She was like, uh, I, uh, like a, a funny chick, almost like Kristen Wiig. She was an actress. Tina Fey of yeah. her day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very that's famous your, that's actress. That's your crush, right? Tina Fey. Love Tina Fey. Yeah. And so, Tina Fey. Uh, and she died. She died in a plane crash, mysteriously. Oh, did she? In 1941. I'm so mysterious and about so, a plane crash. Well, there's a lot of things. Like, her like mom gravity. was obsessed with... Gravity. Yeah, I can solve that one. Her, uh, <laughs> her mom was, like, obsessed with numerology and stuff. Same. And so, Carol Lombard flew to her hometown to, like, raise war bonds. Because we're... Because... Pearl Harbor had happened at this point. We're going to war with Germany. And so then she's like trying to fly home and like forces herself onto this plane because they're like, no, no, soldiers need to be on this plane. They're like, I just raised all this money with the war bonds. Like, let me on the plane. And her mom was like, no, no, like you're 33 years old. Like the, the plane is like flight three. Like there's all this like number shit. Like don't get on the plane. And they all get on the plane and the plane crashes. But anyway, my movie is like, these Nazis are trying to kidnap Clark Gable because they think Hitler's gonna invade the US and they figure like, how can we help Hitler succeed when he invades the US? We want the Americans to actually welcome him. They think it's inevitable Hitler will invade the US and we want Americans to welcome him. If he arrives and Americans don't want him here, he's not gonna succeed. So we have to use this powerful tool of Hollywood to make Americans receptive Great. to Hitler coming to America and Americans being our leader Canadian. and we'll kidnap Clark Gable and we'll sort of make him the star of this movie. That's going to help Hitler take over America. And so in their efforts, they uh, like they had this plan to sort of use like a gas bomb to knock Clark Gable out so they can kidnap him. And then that ends up accidentally on Carol Lombard's plane. So like their whole thing ended up killing Carol Lombard by accident. The, so I sort of fill in that gap. Anyway. Don't I, pitch the whole thing. You're I'm like not just pitching it well. I don't know how to pitch the movie, but Have it's... Have you uh, seen Jojo jo Rabbit? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. love yeah. Jojo Rabbit. Can, can I ask one thing? Is the pitch still in the vein of... Or is the elevator pitch still in the vein of uh, Ocean's Eleven meets Big Fish? Ooh. Yeah, sort of. I mean, it's like... Because I remember that's what it was at whenever I helped you with there's it. There's like a heist. Like, obviously, I'm like, trying to figure out how to kidnap Clark Gable. But anyway, the cool parallels is that during the 30s, I don't have like a succinct pitch. Stop so this talking, is, but I, stop I'm into it's this. a good idea. Don't put it out in the. We can talk about it afterwards. Well, what's cool, <laughs> nobody watches this podcast. What's cool. Don't say that. Is that People in the watch. 30s, you're, not cool Your dad it. watches it. You know how he does People about watch. the movie. What's your dad's name? Warner. 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 That's my I middle name as well. <laughs> okay, you know how like right now it's like, I oh, China. I like China has like control of our movies. Like you can't put something in a movie that's like anti-China because then it's not going to play in China and that's a big bug. <laughs> so like Hollywood bends to China. <laughs> Terrible timing. During the 30s, that was for Germany. Like Hitler had a guy in Hollywood 
You couldn't make a movie against Germany in oh, Hollywood. Oh, you got so many parallels, Because 80% of the European market was Germany. Yeah. And, like, Hitler, like, made all the major studios fire all their Jewish workers in Germany. And they all did, except for Warner Brothers. Like, there's all this, like, Warner. Hollywood was like... Brothers. Warner, not Warner. <laughs> Hollywood was, like, bending to Hitler the same way they sort of bend to China now. And so there's all those parallels... I'm in. Anyway, sorry. It's good. I don't have like a quick way to say it. I Can I read it? Master that. I just want uh, Re- I Tommy want to read Boy 2. I haven't read the new That's iteration. <laughs> Tommy Boy 2. What did you way say? Way better answer. I said all I want is Tommy Boy 2. I, what's Tommy uh, Boy Me too. too. The movie's Tommy, Tommy Boy. Boy. With Chris Farley oh! and Dale, or David Spade. That's Daniel my favorite Spade. movie Never ever. Never heard of it. That is like what my blood Do you know Chris is Farley? made of. Yeah, it's a Chris Farley. Movie. You should watch the rise and fall of Chris it's Farley just, or whatever that was on. Uh, I love, the I love I so much like Netflix. slapstick humor mm-hmm. and like very. It's low hanging fruit for me. Oh, that's it's good. Just, I'll like, do it. I'll trip I just that. love it. And he was like kind of just this king of being a clown and just sort of. Uh, you don't know Chris Farley. Such a Chris fucking Farley. The SNL, the big fat guy. It was also like Jim Carrey back in the day, like Ace Ventura. Fat guy with a little coat. But yeah, it just that was like the budding of all my humor i would want something funny like that but also like a feel-good family movie maybe one that like teaches people how to make healthy boundaries you know family's Ooh. hard family can be hard home you alone are the hardest family's triggering so <laughs> like home, home alone not home alone well home alone was great home about boundaries i don't know if you watched it no, I was home, home alone yeah too. Closer not to too, Tommy Boy, a little Home Alone. Sure. Never seen Tommy Boy. I need to watch you, it. You've got oh to watch so it. Oh my God, you need to watch it. It's just so, so it's good. just it's so funny. Are you from New Zealand? And yeah, there was funny. yeah, there he was he did a lot of things like uh cat what was it Beverly Hills Ninja Black or Sheep. Black Sheep <laughs> Same which was cast, so funny. Yeah. Black Same Sheep leads. was great too, where his brother was like aspiring politician figure. And he's just this total, he's always just this fuck up, right? Like he can't get his life together. He's his just, heart. Like, but he's got a heart of gold. He's just like this beautiful. But you make one more mess. Chris Farley movie. Oh God, I would just, I see yeah, I no, figure it out. Too much I'd, make, I'd make another Chris Farley By the way, Farley I really movie. regret my long, bad pitch for my movie. <laughs> we can come back to you. We can come back to you. Don't worry about just it. Just because you're followed up with Tommy Boy doesn't, <laughs> no, doesn't mean I, really I, I should have just said like the profoundest. A movie your... that, you know, is like goofy. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were passionate the whole time about it. No, I'm, I'm, I'm in. in. I'm, I'm already like, making it. Right. I'm already right. like, right. Good. Right. I do think you should actually give your formal pitch to Fleur at some point. I think I've already asked for it also in real life. It's fucking good. I want to read it. Yeah, I. Thank you for saying my name right. I, I, I concentrated, so I'm relieved that that's the case. <laughs> How'd you say it? Fleur. Yeah. Fleur. Okay. That's what I've been saying, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> I said it wrong at first. Yeah. I kept saying fluer. Fluer. That's better than fluer. No, but I want to I read you a real fucked up story. Like, I'm into it. I think there's a world It needs it. work, but you I can do it. You know what breaks my heart about your pitch? I need somebody to just sit there and be like, Paul this is was working feverishly for a, for a long time. And I don't mean to call you out. But he was. He was working feverishly on this movie. Oh, no, I know. I worked with him for like six months. I've had spurs. Like, so, so intensely. 20 years. I mean, I'm always in awe of you. I don't mean to like throw you under the bus here. That's on the the bus. bus. That's first seat in the bus. That's my favorite bus. Paul works very hard, you know. (laughs) But he was motivated. He was like really plowing through. But then there was one thing that completely derailed him. And he has not gotten back on since. Well, wait, wait. Well, so a big part of the story... Is that because it's like I guess the the historical accuracy? Well, no, like um, coincidence versus fate. Mm -hmm. That's sort of the broad thing. What is coincidence? What is fate? Mm -hmm. Is our fate predestined? Free will, or are do crazy coincidences sometimes happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's basically what it is. That is, and so there's all this numerology happening, and I wanted it to be that the Nazis to kidnap Clark Gable, they put this this gas bomb in like a suitcase they have you know like one of those numbered suitcases oh, yeah. but they leave it they leave it already unlocked and they have an electromagnet that's going to just open up in the car release the gas knock them out we take them now we got them but then the thing won't open like they're they're following behind the car trying to like trigger it to open but it won't open because like it fell and the numbers got shuffled and stuff and then carol lombard accidentally takes that with her on the flight 
and she actually thinks because it's like a woman's kind of suitcase so she thinks Clark Gable's having an affair oh Probably. And so that's why she's like trying to get into this thing. She's like, I want to get in. And he was in. famous for having affairs. And he well. was famous for, like in my movie, he is having an affair actually. Yeah. And so with Lana Turner, that's the little starlet that's in his movie. Little and starlet, aka okay, tramp. Little tramp ass bitch. And so <laughs> then Carol Lombard's finally, like when she was on the flight, um, I have it where the pilot, because it's just her and soldier. Her, her, her friend and her mom are the only civilians on the flight and then it's just all soldiers. It was supposed to be all soldiers, but she insisted they got on this flight. It was for a USO show, right? That she went she, to- she was flying home from a USO show. Yeah. And the reason she was in such a rush to get home was because she thought her husband was having an affair. Like, and so it's sort of all her like jealousy and like fear. It's fueled by it. It's fueling it. Anyway, so she's clinging to this suitcase the whole time on this trip. And then the people, the the flight attendant or whatever is like, hey, the pilot would love to say hi to you if you want to come up and say hi to the pilot. And she's like, sure, I'd love to. Like, it's chaotic back here. All these soldiers are fucking all over me. Like, I'd love to. And then she just gets up in the front and it's just the co-pilot, the pilot and her. And she's like, this is kind of nice up here. Like, just the three of us. And then she goes, oh shit. And like, my mom was saying like, TWA flight three, I'm 33. Like all all those numbers click to her. And then she looks down at the box or the, the suitcase and she tries three, 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 mm. and you hear it pop open. But this is in there is gas that'll knock everybody out. Aww. So that's how the plane crashed. So what is the So what is your problem with that? The Those, problem the combo is... the three combo suitcase did not exist until the seventies. That's what derailed your that's what derailed <laughs> your entire movie. Well that's not historically accurate. And the whole thing in my movie is like this could have happened. That's my movie. It's like, this could have actually happened. I'm not changing any piece of history. I'm plugging in little things that maybe happened, maybe didn't. But this could have happened. It's sort of my whole thing. So to, for something to be there that doesn't exist for another 50 years, just fucking fucked me. Now, I just, now, I'm re, now I'm writing it where it's just someone's an inventor, and this is their invention, and they've got this technology Didn't that nobody else has. they have headlocks? Yeah, but... You know the visual of three, three, three. You really yeah, want that. Yeah, but can you just go three, really, three, three, I mean, I didn't mean yeah, to tease you about this, cool. but it is just amazing how the human brain works. Mm. That you could have been so stupid, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so committed, so, and so the padlock. just so committed. But then that one thing just no, but, but kind what, of how many, left how many him were there back then? Confused. What do you mean? Like, like, what was it? Like, there was no, no, it was nothing just, existed with numbers. A lock, would either be a key lock on a suitcase also, or like a Do you a see the metaphor in the fact that you're going to unlock your future when you mm. unlock the padlock ah. of the suitcase? I see it. I like that, but I also like the numbers thing because also famously, and I mean, like in, in historical context, you could, you could make the argument that um, hit, like the Nazis were like getting a lot of funding for a lot of things that were like futuristic, so to speak. No, they so were like, inventing. So they get things. a little bit of leeway on. Yeah. I agree. Leeway on that. That's exactly. I. That's what I, I, I said. I have it now. We're one of the characters said, dead. You, you deserve leeway. Allow yourself yeah. leeway for this little small thing. I'm not but, gonna put in that like that this existed when it didn't. But I have now. Where one guy's dad was a veteran of World War One and was like sort of an inventor, an engineer for the Germans, and would have he invented this. It didn't really it wasn't go patented, anywhere until yeah. the seventies, but he invented it, and he gave his wife a present, a suitcase, like right. a feminine female it's suitcase with it, and it's the only one that exists. It's just, and it's that's just, it. Now that that covers me, I, that covers me. But so you now figured I'm it out. I figured it out, but I haven't now. Well, because get back on the rails, man. Rails, man. And there's a lot of rails going on, because you know. It is so hard to start again, and it's yeah, like momentum is so real, and you just losing it. Look, is if there so were any comments on this podcast video, it should be go, Paul, go, go, Paul. Paul, go. two things though, and I'm sure I don't know what's happening, but I was just pointing one, to people to comment down below. Below, <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> I don't even know those. One thing, Goofy. I thought you were going to talk about Goofy. Second, <laughs> you have so many coals in the fire. And you're mm. so talented. Which Definitely. coal are you going to stoke? Because that's the thing. It's like a back burner right now. Yeah. So for a while there, I brought it to the front. I was just working all the time, and, and then it, it went back to the back because I'm so focused on other things. There's only so much I can do. But that's the question. There's only so I much also, you can do realistically. Yeah, but I also don't want to use that as like a crutch and an excuse. 
I could work on it one day a week and just take the time. And after six months, maybe it would be ready to... Have you heard of The Blacklist? The movie yeah, with, or the show with James Spader? No, it's a it's the a scripts things. scripts yeah program mm -hmm. that you just submit your stuff to, and then people decide mm -hmm. whether it's good or not. That's what you're gonna do next week. Yeah, you should. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, I'm not. I don't yet have something that I could send you that you could read top to bottom and have it all. Right. But you almost do. I almost you do. You had like and random so scenes on almost. note cards, and we're like arranging it all. I mean, it was just yeah, amazing. I had it all on note cards. Like I could you sit do. down with you and go scene by Wait, scene on the note what's cards. What's the name of it? Gable. Oh, makes sense. <laughs> Maybe we should lock you in Clark Gable. Gable's house to finish it. That yeah, could be. seriously. That'd be cool. But pick you up in a week. But the cool thing is, like, Clark Gable's actually not that big of a character, but it's like sort of disguised. As, you know, it's like. The Abraham Lincoln movie was called Lincoln, but yeah. it was really about like the passing of the Thirteenth Amendment. Like yeah. that's what it was. Like he, it wasn't Gable about his whole life or anything like Clock's that. Clock's thinking too, because ideally you have Clooney do it, because Clooney looks the most like Gable. Mm. Clooney could do it, but I, yeah, I mean, what? I like the clock ticking. Yeah, clock's ticking. I agree. But it, someone else not, could do it. It's not ticking. Maybe you're just like so. Few, in the future, it's no, no. He, 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 like we, we worked on it together. Whenever we lived at the NoHo house, and then you stopped because uh, fuck, what movie came out that looked exactly like it? Oh, Hail Caesar came out. Mm. You're like these motherfuckers kind of made it. This didn't make me stop, but it scared me. But then when I saw it, I was like, it's not that. Good. I remember I was being drunk when I was like. What's the yeah. time? Well, then Jojo the Rabbit comes out, and I'm like, "Fuck!" Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's still not the same. Not the same. Not the at all. The same. There's room yeah. for it all. That's it. There's no. Cool. And then the Glorious Bastards came out, and I was like, "Fuck!" But still not the same. <laughs> but but up, but movies yeah. keep coming out that are like closer and closer. But that I'm not scared. Right somebody's home. gonna do this exact thing because I mean, now it's that you put it rare. out there, in the it world. is now <laughs> out. The thirty of you know how to plot now so. right so i'm trusting both of you to please <laughs> not steal it. dad mom dad <laughs> please don't write this film um but yeah that's i think it's a great it's a really i've always movie. loved what, it I what's think it's the great. tone I agree with like the tone is don't get in your way a little yeah. whimsical it's so, more it's jojo so, rabbit so fish Coen brothers kind of funny it's a comedy but like yeah it's a comedy who would direct it other than JC. Hey! Um, I would do it justice, but if you had budget, don't do me. <laughs> what a friend. That's nice. Who so would direct it? I mean, it's a great question. I don't know. Do you know the, you know, Werner Herzog? Sure. About his, that crazy, st oh, I'm going to get my facts wrong, but basically there was a plane <laughs> ride and it crashed and he's the only one who survived. And then he went and found... Do you know about this song? I'm gonna... You're talking about Travis Barker, I think? Just kidding. He what? wasn't playing Crash. He wasn't playing Crash. Was 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 Kardashians Burner helped him one of those? overcome his fear of flying. Did they? God bless the Kardashians. I agree. Could not agree more. Are you gonna no, do this beer is a crazy fact now? about Crash. <laughs> yeah, I'm on the dice here. Crash. Okay, listen to this. This is... Oh, wait. Images. It's musical. It's musical. Airplane. Stuff. One, two, and three. Mm. Wings of Hope. Actually. I did not know this about Verna. I know. Wings of Hope is a 1998 made-for-TV documentary directed by Werner Herzog. The film explores the story of Julianne Kopech, a German-Peruvian <laughs> woman who was a sole survivor of a Peruvian flight, Lanza Flight 508, following oh, mid-air dis disintegration after a lightning strike in 1971. And then he went, oh, yeah, and then he, and gravity. she's like, look, look at her, and, and he went and found her. Hate it. <laughs> okay. I've heard of and this. And she lived in the jungle, and he went and... She fell from like 20,000 feet up. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh. But she stayed where oh. she landed? She survived, and he, she lived in the jungle. She had like a broken leg and something else, or broken yeah. something. But he went and found her, like, the, she was the she, first she one survived. to find her? No, people found her. Found her, yeah, no, she but survived, he found the story, found her. Found her. Herzog Found her. was inspired to make this film since he had narrowly avoided taking the same flight while he was on location scouting Aguirre, Wrath of God. His reservation had been cancelled due to the last minute change in itinerary. That's what I thought of when you were telling me. Whoa, he was almost on the flight. So you talk about like coincidence. Or coincidence. Yeah, there was even in one of the airports when she was insisting to get on a plane, there was like also a famous violinist kind of traveling at the same time and he wanted the Flights, he wanted to fly as well. No, no, sorry, wrong. Scratch that. So <laughs> she does her USO show, gets back to her hotel room. Huh? Who? Carol Lombard. Oh, sorry, back in the Yeah. 
finishes her USO show. It was actually record breaking money she raised. Record like two breaking. Million, two million dollars. <laughs> Brank it. Brank she it. broke it. She broke the bank. She broke the bank. It. it was record breaking. Brank Brank it. Breaking. <laughs> anyway, she gets back to the hotel. She's like, I want to. I don't want to take the train home like we were planning. I want to fly because I think Clark's having an affair and I want to get there soon. Whoa. And they flipped a coin. Whoa. Her and her friends flipped a coin. Yeah. And she won the coin toss. Wow. Oh. So that's already like. Did they have coins though? Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Did they flip were coins, coins? invented? <laughs> Was planes and bitches. Yeah, it was actually my mom helped me make this movie very realistic. Or because like I started writing it and I was living with my parents after college, like as a waiter when I first thought of the idea. Well, and um, I was just telling her about this movie and I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna do this and have this." She's like, "Well, what was hap- Like, was that going on then? Uh, was there a war? Like, where were the like?" And I was like, I don't know. And I was just going to like make it all up. He was like, wouldn't it be great? Like you should kind of, it should be grounded in history. It should be accurate. Mm-hmm. And then I started doing all this research to learn oh, so like, what was happening. you got stuck in the history. I got, like, I learned a lot. Here's the thing though. Good you way. can, good way. you can cre- take creative liberties too. I know, but a, a selling and point to me is that like it could have happened. Yeah. Without too many creative liberties, like inventing things that didn't but, exist yet. But in your adherence to that rule well you were like subscribing to this idea that that scrolling of a suitcase lock is like such a big big point but i i don't think the integrity of anything is is lost by i've definitely let things a wall be built in my head that so it's like, oh, now I can't finish it because there's that. <laughs> yeah. And really all I need to do is like, just finish it. Even if it's like, has a flaw in it, at least it's finished. You, you can send it to someone, they can read it down. We can work on the flaw later. They'll be like, yeah, why didn't you use the Shlavosky lock from 1978? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I have like, a weird, oh. there's a weird, there is a hang up. There is like a reluctancy, like a fear of success. Like there yes. is a fear of finishing it. bringing it back. That, that's, I definitely acknowledge that that's there. But, but you, you also have like a very ingrained logical thing in your brain sometimes with the writing, I feel like, for instance, you couldn't write the fact that somehow you got to the top of a roof in Peru that we we don't even know how you got to the top of because you had to like Stairs. go through, no, but you had to get through, no, but you had to get, but there's like an apartment building above hand and like you had to like go through a certain stairs to get there. Like there's like a whole fucking weird maze to get up there and you got up there somehow. Life is stranger than fiction and I feel like sometimes writers don't give themselves the creative liberties in so because they think that everything is so... Right, they're like, like graphed out when and it's right. not so. Right. Life itself is right. chaos. Right. We How exist right. is chaos. Right. Like there's there, there's not right. a rhyme and reason to any of this, and you need to let that go a little bit. I think in general, and that's all I'm trying to say. And I think that's what Christine's yeah. trying to say. I think you're right in general. Yeah. No, I'm right. <laughs> well, I think <laughs> like as the general, he is right. <laughs> as, you're right as general. <laughs> it bothers me. In, the biggest thing that bothers me in movies that I'll see is like when character motivation just makes no sense. Agreed. Like, Agreed. where one guy's like, oh, I'm just trying to get my wife back. But then, like, his whole motivation is like, what? Like, you just, this is all trying to get your wife back? Like, this is not, like, you know, like, people need to feel real. And that's the biggest thing. Like, so for me, the hardest thing about writing this movie is, like, I need these Nazis. <laughs> to, <laughs> I, need, I need these Nazis to think the most important thing we can do to help everything is to kidnap Clark Gable and, and like make a movie and force him to make this movie or something like that, which feels kind of trite or it feels like, uh, what's the word where you like? Yeah, trite. It's concentrated forced, a little bit. You know, like, and contrived. So, so contrived, thank you. And so getting them but to I don't a point, that word, but. which you can do it, you know, like getting them to a point where they've rationalized, like, this is, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to be heroes. This is what we have to do. We're going to kidnap Clark Gable. That's. It's ben not that far hard from hard the truth. Well. It's like yeah, happening that's what at the saying. moment. That's the thing. Yeah. Like, don't no. get too logical about yeah, it. Yeah, you're right. You're, it's a fear of success. I am afraid to finish it because it's like, oh, then now what? You know, it's I, been a thing. I wouldn't even, it's like this I thing wouldn't even label it yeah. like that. You are yeah. a very busy person with a lot of stokes and a lot of fires. And it's okay. I just only, I They're jokingly first. called you out on that because. Oh, thanks for that. I appreciate it. Because it just, it was, it's, um. 
when you were are working on something, you go all in. You know, it's like Which a noticeable amazing. thing. Yeah, it's a beautiful, amazing thing. So, it's just been a long time since I've seen you work on that. Yes. And I happen to know intimately <laughs> why that is. So I roasted it's you for of the it. Law. <laughs> <laughs> so I shared that with everybody. Roasting is love language. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. Different languages. That's why you should stop being a pussy and finish the fucking movie. <laughs> Just finish the movie, Paul. Oh, well, also, detach. Also, the GoFundMe is a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That was still the idea. If you want to watch okay. this movie, it's called Gable. But also, detachment <laughs> is a beautiful thing, right? You've got lots of other brilliant things going on. And so, just fucking finish it. That's it. <laughs> yeah, no, I did right. Yeah, just finish it on high. Just finish it. Uh, and everybody's waiting for right. it. Yeah, we just waiting for all of the Yeah, no we gotta go. Contact. We gotta go right Wait, should we close our eyes? Wait, here's a new one. I'm Everybody close right. your eyes and cheers. I'm looking to work. Right. I'm not looking. Don't break my glasses. Don't break my glasses. Don't be careful. <laughs> all right, good night, everybody. Don't steal my movie idea. I love you. Good night. Bye. Gable.com.